All right, welcome everybody to tonight's live stream. I hope you enjoyed that little intro clip. That was some fun clips, some good music. And we have a very exciting show for you this evening. Now, this is a very impromptu show. I actually was sitting down in my office today looking at all of the news articles coming in. And my gosh, this has absolutely dominated Western headlines here in the United States. I mean, every single news outlet is just, this is front and center. This is the major story. It's on every network, every um, every newspaper. I mean, it is, it is the story happening inside the United States right now. And I think it's an important time to do a live stream because obviously this is a big deal. You know, this channel, we focus on United States and China relationship. And this is a big deal because, you know, whatever you think about this, it is going to have an impact on the future of the U.S.-China relationship. So I kind of wanted to jump in on a live stream because I thought about making a dedicated video about this, but considering the timing of the event, I really wanted to go ahead and do a live stream, also do some interaction with the fans and, and talk to you guys as well. So uh, if you have questions, send them in. I've got a lot of things that I want to discuss because, again, today as I was analyzing everything, I was listening to some podcasts from some think tanks, you know, that were based in Washington, D.C. I wanted to understand how the U.S. is processing everything, listening to the Chinese side as well, you know, the data that they're, that they are um, also presenting to the situation. And again, this is what we're going to be doing tonight is breaking this down. So, you know, of course, you know, everybody's seen these headlines, Washington Post, um, Chinese spy balloon flying over the U.S. right now, says the, says the Pentagon. Uh, I mean, even down in Australia, I mean, here's an article here. This is quite amazing. I mean, look at just how the, how they how they write this headline. China sends a spy balloon across the U.S. ahead of the Blinken visit. Now, of course, Antony Blinken, the Secretary of State um, from the United States, was scheduled to go to Beijing. I believe he was going to arrive on February the 5th and uh, stay there for a couple of days. Uh, I know he was going to be meeting with the foreign minister. Uh, but there was also some recent news that he would potentially meet directly with Xi Jinping as well. And of course, we've now seen some changes in that. We're going to get into that a little bit later on. But again, these have been the headlines that have really uh, dominated everywhere. And there's a couple of things that I want to, to really highlight here, because the first thing is, I, I think we need to establish, you know, is this China spying on the United States? And I think that, you know, when actually when this story first broke, I actually didn't even know if this would really be a Chinese, uh, I, you know, a Chinese object in the air. I, I thought, you know, first of all, how do we know it's even chi from China? And, you know, is this really what China would send to spy? And the first thing that I thought about is I thought, you know, many of you know that I lived in Vancouver, Canada for the last five years. And I'm thinking, well, if this balloon is coming from China, it's going to have to cross into Canadian airspace. Um, you know, where were the Canadians on this? You know, have they known all, all along? Did they not tell, you know, the United States government? There's also a thing that I think we always need to make sure that we're watching with a grain of salt. And that is, we have to remember, we don't know everything that's going on behind the scenes between governments. Okay. And I was listening to a podcast this afternoon with Bill Bishop. Now, Bill Bishop's based in Washington, D.C. Uh, he's a very good China insider. He runs a great newsletter called Sinocism, which I do subscribe to. And he kind of did an emergency podcast himself. And kind of one of the first things that he said in that podcast, I'm going to lead off with this comment, is he said, I think it's important we understand that, that both the United States and China are spying on each other consistently. All right. And I think we just need to come out and say that and make sure that everybody is well aware of that. And if you don't think that's happening, then you have no clue what's going on. Because you have to imagine the United States and China, both of them have the world's two largest militaries, a tremendous amount of intelligence on both sides. You know darn well that the United States is sending spies inside of China. Uh, you know that China is sending spies inside the United States. This is not something that is new. So I think this is, uh, I remember a couple of years ago, remember when they closed the Chinese consulate uh, down in Houston, Texas, and then China retaliated and closed the American consulate down in, I believe it was Chongqing um, or maybe Chengdu. I know it was Southwest, uh, but, you know, we, you know, and that was whole, all, that all had to do with spying as well. So again, we kind of know that this is what superpowers are going to do. And I think, any, you know, I would imagine that the UK and Germany, I mean, they have spies in other places as well. So it's kind of one of those things that 
you know, we know that's going on. And the other thing is, is the interesting thing that Bill Bishop brought up, which I thought was a very good point, is he said that there's been a lot of news stories that have broken that this is not the first time and that actually China has sent many balloons over and, you know, the fact that this has happened for years and years and years. What we might be seeing here is actually the first time that this has come to public knowledge. And I think if that's really the case here, this is, you know, why this has become such a big uh, media story. Because for again, you know, and, and again, we don't know, you know, what the United States is doing. You know, I mean, again, the United States has, you know, look at our budget on the military. I mean, we have some of the most advanced military equipment. We know darn well that the United States is certainly flying military vehicles, um, you know, over Chinese airspace. You know, they've done that before. Um, you know, they have done reconnaissance missions, they have done surveillance. It, it, it's not uncommon for this to happen. So I want, I do want to, um, you know, uh, but but this is one thing I'm going to share in here. This is, I found this was a really funny tweet, because when we're talking about spying, and knowing the fact that we have, you know, basically, both nations are spying on each other, we know that to be true. I thought this was kind of a funny thing. Um, you know, this is a joke, obviously, but it's, uh, you know, Xi Jinping, let's spy on the U.S. and the People's Liberation Army General. Yes, sir. We have many advanced surveillance options. May I recommend a satellite or a radar stealth drone? No, let's get a giant balloon. Uh, yes, sir. And make sure it's big enough that everybody can see it. You know, so obviously this is sarcasm and this is a joke. I, I just kind of wanted to tee this up because it is quite funny when we think of all the advanced technology in the world. I mean, we got, you know, China's the, the home of DJI. I mean, they make the most incredible drones in the world. Um, even, you know, on a side note, you know, when we talk about the U.S. military, because we're, you know, we're in this current phase of banning Chinese technology, the U.S. military, we actually do not have the most advanced drones because we banned that technology from China. And so, you know, the U.S. has kind of handicapped itself with its military and in, in the events in the most advanced drones because they all come from China. And so we don't want to have that software. We don't want to have anything touching China inside the United States military. So that kind of, you know, has put us a little bit further back as far as drone technology. But again, it's it's kind of interesting where, you know, I'm thinking, are we, is China really, is that really what they're trying to do? Are they really trying to spy on the United States using a balloon? It seems a little hard for me to believe. And I think this is the thing where, you know, for again, again Bill Bishop based in Washington, D.C., he had brought on another guest named Andrew Sharp. They have a podcast together on China. I listen to quite a lot of podcasts on China, um, you know, and I, you know, as I'm trying to gather my information and stay as informed as possible. And, you know, he said, I think it was Andrew Sharp who said this afternoon, you know, it's quite amazing that the United States and China relationship is literally blowing up with hot air. You know, this, you know, there's a lot of overreaction here, you know, from the United States. And I think, I think there's, you know, I do want to be very fair and balanced here because the, the reality is, is that obviously, you know, every country, you know, has every country is a sovereign state and, you know, airspace is part of that. And I, and I do say, look at it from the other side as well. You know, for example, what if there was an American, um, you know, balloon that flown into the PRC airspace? Um, I know that China would not react very favorably to that either. Um, but again, we it, it's, it's something that we don't know 100%. I don't think anybody can really know 100%. Um, and the timing of this is also, uh, hold on, let me finish that thought. We can't know 100% because we don't know what our militaries and our governments are doing behind the scenes, right? There's a certain level of knowledge that we have here on the civilian level, and we're just never going to know that deep inside. Another thing that, that um, uh, you know, that I listened this afternoon, one of the Washington officials said, is, you know, it could be very interesting that there could have been maybe a miscalculation or a miscommunication between the People Liberations Army and maybe the government and, you know, how this balloon got out. Now, I do want to also, you know, provide in a little bit of perspective, um, you know, from the Chinese side. Actually, let me take a break. Let me just get a little, uh, have a little look at the comments here. Just passed over 700 people in the stream here. I know a lot of people are very interested in this topic. If you're just joining now, welcome to the show. Um, I'm looking very much forward to breaking this all down for everybody. And we're just going to, uh, let's go to the comments here. Let's take a little break. I can sometimes get on a roll and I speak a little too fast. This is SPO. Common sense tells me if one seriously wants to spy, balloon is certainly not the choice because balloon just randomly drifting cannot be controlled to fly to a certain spot precisely. Yeah, that is, there is a very big um, truth into that. And that's, that's where, um, 
oh, here we go. Here's uh, and, and so that, that is some truth into that. And that's where, you know, China has come up. I'm going to share China's um, government. You know, they came out with a, um, a reaction as well. They actually came out with an official statement that we're going to break down as well. Uh, Winds of China, uh, uh, Zhong Meifeng, uh, channel member. Shout out to you for being a channel member. Thank you for supporting the channel. My hometown is just outside of Billings, Montana, where the balloon was spotted at. I've had a lot of people reach out to me about it. Wow, interesting. Wow, you're based in Montana. I did not know that. That is awesome. Thanks for being here. And thanks for being a channel member. <laughs> this is funny, Ferdinand. Uh, we won't be able to buy Chinese balloons for parties in a few weeks. <laughs> That's awesome. That's the best comment I've heard. Uh, this is great. You guys are awesome. I love my, I love my fans. We got a lot of people, you know, someone tuning in from East Africa. Um, hello from New Zealand. I'm amazed. Just, you know, our live streams, they're so much fun. We get people from all over the world joining in here. This is really why I love to, to, um, uh, you know, do these live streams and have a YouTube channel. So much fun. Uh, David uh, Nemo, would you go back to China? I definitely would. And I'm planning to go back to China this year. I can't wait to get to go back to China. I'm very excited uh, for that. Um, so anyways, guys, so thank you for the nice comments. Yeah, send your comments in. I want this to be a lot of, um, you know, a lot of fun, a lot of interaction. We've got people tuning in from South Africa, David, Singapore, Tan from Singapore, um, uh, Kasaman um, from Nigeria. Thank you so much. General Scarbo, Scotty, Toronto, Canada in the house. Nice. From Hong Kong. A lot of people in China as well. This is great. From Zambia. Beautiful. I've got a video coming out this weekend about uh, China's efforts in Africa. I've got a very interesting video for you guys. It's going to debut on Sunday evening. So uh, stay tuned for that or Monday if you are in uh, an Asia, Asia Pacific region. So, uh, oh, Burnaby, shout out to Burnaby, James Harp. I was, you know, close to my place there in Vancouver there. Very nice. Love it. All right, guys, we got a great, uh, we're coming up on 800 people here. Awesome to see everybody in the stream. Um, I'm going to keep checking back the comments. I want this to be an interactive show. Let's have some fun because, you know, to be honest, it's it's an interesting thing. I mean, it, it's I, I really do think that a lot of this is a lot of, of hype. I mean, it's just, it's, and the problem with this is, is again, I'm going to go back to that, to that slide because you see how the media reports this, right? It's almost like, you, you know, we know that Antony Blinken is going to be going to China. It's a, it's a very important meeting. And, and this is actually, I think it's actually a very sad thing because unfortunately, um, where is this the one? China's China suspected spy balloon prompts Blinken to postpone the Beijing trip as Congress seeks answers. And I think this is a big loss because what this meeting in Beijing that was going to happen, it was very important because back in November, Xi Jinping met with Joe Biden and they met at the G20 in Bali, Indonesia. This was a fantastic meeting with world leaders across the world coming together. And it was the first time that Biden and, and Xi met in person. And if you've been a longtime follower of the channel, you know that I am very much one for engagement. I'm one for dialogue. And I think that, you know, Biden and she should be meeting all the time. I mean, they should almost have a monthly phone call between these two. I mean, it really, the more engagement that you have, um, you know, between US and China, I think is an absolutely positive thing. And you're going to hear that across the board. You'll hear that in Washington, DC, at least from people that really understand the world we live in. Anybody that says dialogue's not good, we need to decouple, you know, China's the enemy. If you have people going down this road, they don't understand the global economy that we live in. They don't understand how deeply connected our American economy is to the Chinese economy. So, any, I, you know, as soon as somebody goes down that road, it's like, yeah, okay, I get what you're trying to say. You don't really understand the world that we live in because everybody needs it. You know, we absolutely need it for the future of this world is, is an engagement and the two biggest nations talking to each other. So the, the reason that Blinken was going to Beijing was essentially to follow up on what she and Biden said back in November. OK, and there's also an important time to go as well, because there are some interesting developing developments here in the United States. We have McCarthy, who is our new speaker of the House here in America. Now, he is very much a China hawk. And he, you know, he said that he's, you know, he's made it like one of his first things that he wants to do is go directly to Taiwan. And again, it's very concerning for me as an American citizen. And this is kind of what I'm talking to people here on the ground here in America is I just said, you know, imagine this, you know, you just became the Speaker of the House. Uh, I mean, and you're representing the United States government. You know, why on earth would you want to go to Taiwan? You know, it's not time to take a personal holiday right now. There's no benefits for you to go into Taiwan. Focus on your country. 
focus on the United States of America. You know, that's that's the point that I talk to a lot of Americans here where I say, you know, we have so many issues in this country that need our politicians to actually do something, but the system's corrupt, the politicians could care less. They want to fulfill their own agenda. And I think that's where we've lost a lot of hope. I mean, I know that I have. I don't really have much faith in this um political system that we have here. I'm not a huge fan of it. I think there's just way too much money, way too much corruption. And it, and it, and it, there you go. I mean, this is a great example. You know, you're, 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 you're just stepping in as the Speaker of the House. You've got a great opportunity to unite Democrats and Republicans, try to focus on some things that are going to improve American lives. But nope, let's go right to Taiwan. Why? Because we want to piss off China. Let's just call it as it is. That's really the only thing they want to do is just to go there and, you know, steer the pot and get China angry. It doesn't accomplish anything for the United States. And, you know, it's it's unfortunate because now all of a sudden this this because of this balloon, you know, now U.S. China talks are now put on the back burner. Right? Or at least they're postponed. Hopefully they can come back. They can resume again. But again, I think there's a lot of, um, you know, there's just a lot of things that we this is a big, this is unfortunately a huge setback because what we're seeing here is we're seeing a very big media reaction. We're seeing many people just, uh, it's actually very concerning for me because one of the videos that I made about two weeks ago is I highlighted, um, for example, MSNBC, how they bring in these guys and they're analyzing China. And there is a tremendous amount of Sino, um, you know, fear, you know, basically this, this, um, this fear of China, and it is just getting worse and worse every day. Now, the problem is, is that when we tell American citizens that China is the greatest enemy, and then every day we get on people that honestly don't have a good insights into China, but yet we bring them into mainstream media and they're able to spew nonsense. And I made a video about this, you know, a guy like Kyle Bass, hedge fund manager, he should be focusing on, you know, managing his hedge fund. But he goes on MSNBC and says, hey, you know what? All Chinese people are tied to the Chinese government. You know, we need to look at all Chinese people as potential spies in this country. When you're going on national television saying this, this is going to lead directly to an increase in Asian hate crime. I mean, it's 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 absolutely correlated. And anybody arguing that it's not is full of nonsense. And so now the problem with this is, is that now you can imagine, I mean, imagine if I were to make a YouTube video where I go on the streets of America and I say, you know, what is your perception of China right now? Well, because of this media outlet, and this is where it's dangerous, right? China sends a spy balloon across, you know, the U.S. ahead of the Blinken visit. Now, first of all, we don't even know this is a spy balloon, okay? That has not been confirmed. And the other thing is, is that China's ministry has actually come out and cleared the air on what this actually is. So let's go ahead and read that comment here, just so that we're all here on the bottom there. I've highlighted that the airship is from China. It is a civilian airship used for research, mainly uh, meteorological purposes, affected by the westerlies with a self-limiting with a limited self-steering ca uh, capability the airship deviated far from its planned course the chinese side regrets the unintended entry of the airship into us airspace due, due to force majeure the chinese side will continue communicating with the us side and properly handle this unexpected situation so this is the official statement from Obviously, you can see that from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the People's Republic of China. Now, the interesting thing is, is that essentially the Pentagon came out today and they said that they're not really buying it. They're like, we don't really believe that this is a civilian aircraft. We don't believe that this is for meteorological purposes. Um, <clears throat> you know, we are, you know, we're, we're causing, you know, we have some suspicions about that. I mean, again, I think I'm trying to kind of dissect everything here along with with all of us, right? I mean, this news is very new. This is maybe 36 hours old, this whole th this whole story. So, you know, it's it's you know, again, we go back to some facts here. Number 1, we know that the United States and China spy on each other. That's probably that's been happening for many years. It will continue to happen for many years. I think the key thing is is, you know, is China going to spy with a balloon? Is that really what's going to happen here? Um it does seem totally, you know, uh, plausible that that yes it was a you know civilian aircraft that yes the, you know the winds deviated off of course I think what we could argue with is that you know if China knew this was going to happen I think you could definitely say China could have done a better job of a no notifying the American authorities you know like hey FYI 
we've got a um, civilian aircraft. It's out of our control. The winds are very strong, and it's you know going to potentially cross into U.S. airspace. I mean, we do need to be more conscious of this airspace because same thing, right? If it was a U.S. Um, aircraft crossing over into China, I know China would certainly appreciate a heads up. But it just it makes me really wonder because again, like what's going on with Canada? You know, did they did they not understand what was going on? And so, I mean, I saw this today on the Canadian news is that the Canadian government in Ottawa, that's the capital city of, of Canada, uh, they had actually summoned the Chinese ambassador, who, of course, is based in Ottawa as well. So they basically had brought him in and kind of summoned him kind of for an explanation. So it makes me wonder, like, did the Canadians not see this in their airspace? Were they fine as well? Were they tracking it? I did read some articles today as well that did say that the United States military was tracking this aircraft for several days before. So again, it could be this gray area where maybe, you know, maybe the U.S. and China were communicating. Maybe the generals already knew about this, you know, the United States generals that are. So there's a lot of things that we, um, you know, that we don't, that we don't, we don't have all the, uh, all the answers to, but that's why we're breaking it down in tonight's live stream. So, hey, we've just crossed over 1,100 people in the live stream. This is awesome, guys. I really, really appreciate you guys being here. Um, let's go back to the comments here. Let's take a little break here. Uh, it is from Northeast China, Greg says. <clears throat> let's see here. Um, it originally floated into the Canadian airspace. You're right, Hung. It did float into the Canadian airspace. I'm just wondering, like, why, um, you know, Canada didn't say anything. That's kind of where I'm I'm, I'm, I'm just a little, uh, you know, a little perplexed here. You know, I did, I did find this interesting article uh, in doing some research here. Take a look at this. Uh, the Pentagon tests mass surveillance balloons across the United States. Now, this is actually from 2019. Um, so this is an old article, you know, total d disclosure on that. Um, but again, you know, the, it looks like China is not the only one that has these uh, mass surveillance balloons. Uh, I mean, it, it is an interesting one. And I think what we're going to kind of shift our focus here now is talking about, um, you know, what is the, you know, what is the next game plan here? Because I think the last that I heard, I believe that this balloon is in Missouri, I believe is currently over Missouri, and I believe that it's going to be drifting across the United States. And now the big question is, is, you know, what will the United States do? Now, I, I shared a tweet earlier today, and this, this is quite concerning because what you what you have in America right now is I've said this many times before we have a very polarized society here where you know the country is split right down the middle 50-50 on basically every single issue in this country and what the re republicans are for example you look at someone that's very extreme somebody like a Marjorie Taylor Greene who is just I mean, I think she's just not qualified to be in politics, to be honest. I mean, I just, she is not qualified to be an elected public official. But you have someone like her that just said, you know, immediately she's going to come on and say, well, if Donald Trump was president, you know, we would have taken, you know, the military planes would have shot that thing out of the sky. We would have sent a clear signal to China. And the problem with this is, is that, you know, we are not staying calm right? We're overreacting to this. And all of a sudden, now a lot of Americans are going to be filled with this rage. They're going to be listening to their politicians that represent them, like somebody like a Marjorie Taylor Greene, and say, oh, wow, you know, we need to take, we need to take this on, you know, we let's, let's take down this, uh, this balloon. And, you know, meanwhile, why not, you know, let's start, go ahead and start taking on China. I've actually heard people you know, say this in some of my YouTube comments where people are like, no, you know what? I think it's time that we just go over to China and we start a war with them. And I, I just, people don't realize what they're talking about, right? We, you don't, we don't realize for the sake of humanity what a war between the United States and China would mean. It would mean the end of humanity. Like it would be the, it would be like the, not the end of humanity, it'd be the end of our global economy for sure. It, you know, the stock market would crash. I mean, the economies would crash. Like all of this progress for decades and decades and decades would basically crash. And, you know, it, and it's, it's a little bit of irrational thinking. And that's where I think, you know, where I'm, again, I'm, I'm very worried about this because in this country, we're seeing, you know, more Asian hate crimes. We're seeing an increase, you know, you know, China's bad, China's bad. And this is just not, not good for the future of our world. And so I think the interesting thing that I did read as well is that because of the altitude of the balloon, that the United States military does not actually have the equipment 
to be able to take down this balloon. Now, I believe that it has actually descended a little bit, and I believe it's now kind of coming into that area where it potentially could be shot down. Um, now, of course, then you have to worry about the debris and, you know, what, you know, what's going on. But one of the things that I heard from Washington, D.C. this afternoon is they said that I, I don't think that you're going to see the United States are going to try to take this uh, down. I don't think you're going to see them take it down, at least while it's over the United States soil. However, what they are anticipating is potentially as soon as it basically reaches that east coast, wherever that is, and it you know crosses into the Atlantic Ocean, that they would put, you know, then they would, it would hopefully be at a lower altitude and they would be able to take those shots and go ahead and take out that balloon. And then obviously it would fall to the ocean. You know, they would have people there to, you know, recover that. It'd be interesting to see if, if they take that action because, you know, you have to wonder, you know, what kind of, if they, if they recover all of the things from the balloon, are they going to, you know, going to find some machines? Are they going to find some information? You know, that would be, um, it'd be a very interesting thing if that were to actually happen. I don't know if they're going to take that shot though. I don't know if that's, if that's what's going to happen. But again, I think what we need, really need to, you know, what we really need to understand here is that, again, something that I always say on this channel, right? It, when you have these kind of situations, we need to take a moment to sit back. We need to breathe. We need to kind of basically get a little bit more information. You know, we need to understand a little bit before we immediately jump to conclusions here. And I'm going to kind of share um, a series of tweets here that I thought were really good and kind of give you some interesting thing. Now, this is from Kaiser Kuo who is um, Kaiser Ko, he, he is awesome. You know, he is he runs another uh, China podcast. Um, he is with, um, uh, I think it's the Seneca, Seneca podcast, really good podcast on China. I really love listening to him. He's got some awesome guests on there. Uh, but again, this is so, so this is, this is the, you know, China State, China State affiliated media here <clears throat> who send out the, basically the, 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 the thread that I read earlier, basically that this is an airship from China. It is a civilian airship used for research, mainly meteorological purposes. Now, oh, there we go. And Kaiser comes out and he says, well, believe them or don't, at least it shows that they don't want the Blinken visit to go sideways. And, you know, that's a good insight. You know, I think that's a good insight. And this is from Kaiser, who, again, who's saying, obviously, you know, I think China they certainly welcome Blinken to come to China. I mean, they've obviously extended him an invitation. They've obviously prepared for this. Um, you know, obviously she and Biden sat down and talked about things that need to happen in the United States and China relationship. Uh, again, I've, I've mentioned this in several recent videos. I want to just mention this one more time. When we're talking U.S. and China, always just remember this. 2022 was the largest amount of trade ever between the United States and China. So despite everything going on, just always remember behind the scenes, there's a lot more that is going on. And that is, of course, a lot of trade, a lot of business, a lot of U.S. and China actually working together. I think that's important to realize. But this is the big thing that I like. This is kind of the main tweet that I really love from Kaiser. And I think this is mostly about the Biden team's fears over being attacked as soft on China. Now, I believe he's talking, he's talking in reference to Blinken canceling his trip, right? And, you know, being, being attacked as soft on China by the MacArthurites. Pathetic. Wish they'd sow some damn spine. The party they should prioritize standing up is the GOP, not the CCP. Now, this is a big statement here because, again, this is what we're talking about when we're talking about McCarthyism. Right. We're talking about McCarthyism, which is back in the 1950s, where we had people, you know, being labeled as communist. And I mean, I get that. People say, Cyrus, you're a CCP sympathizer. Hey, Cyrus, you, you know, you love the Communist Party. I don't love the Communist Party. I simply analyze what the Communist Party is doing along with the United States government. Right. I cover U.S. China polit politics. We cover geopolitics on this show. Um, you know, we make observations about what's happening between the United States and China. Um, at the end of the day, you know, China's government's not my government. I'm not a Chinese citizen. I don't live in China. Um, it is not my government. So it's it's not like I, it, you know, they don't represent me, but the United States is my government. And I do live in the United States and I am an American citizen. So I am going to share my opinions about the U.S. government and, you know, call out actions like this, because I think this kind of tweet really sums up what I'm feeling on the situation. And also, you know, my my worries for the future of this, because you know, I, I I referenced this in a video probably about a year ago. It's kind of worth mentioning before. Um, but there was a, um, you know, that we used to have foreign diplomats back in back in China, 
in the 19, you know, 30s and 40s and 50s. And the interesting thing is, is that um, I think I forgot that John Service, I believe was his name, John Service. Now, John Service was, a, he was a, he wasn't an ambassador, but he was a, he was a United States diplomat. And I believe actually he was born in Chongqing to missionary parents. So his parents were missionaries. They were based in Chongqing. John Service, born in Chongqing, grew up basically Chinese. You know, he grew up in the streets with playing with Chinese kids. So he had a absolutely fluent level of um, Mandarin Chinese. And actually, he became very close to Chairman Mao. And this was the interesting thing is that, you know, Chairman Mao invited John Service into, you know, his home. And they spent three days together. And they, you know, shared meals. You know, Chairman Mao's wife was cooking meals for him. They, you know, they were, had letters. They were writing. They were talking, discussing. And the main, the main message is he said, you're the closest that I can get to America. And we need America, right? Chairman Mao, you know, his big message was is that we need foreign investment. We need to partner with the United States. You know, we, this is what we need in order to modernize China. Um, you know, Chairman Mao had a very big vision for what he wanted to create. <coughs> Excuse me. Need a little water here. I've been talking too much. Talking. So Chairman Mao had a very big vision for the future of China. And this was the only, and again, remember at the time, right? At the time, you know, the United States government wanted nothing to do with Chairman Mao, right? And what they did is the United States government, they supported Chiang Kai-shek. They gave him tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars, in fact, you know, supporting Chiang Kai-shek you know, funding Chiang Kai-shek, you know, and basically investing in and saying, you know, Chiang Kai-shek is the ruler of China. Chiang Kai-shek is going to be the future. And the reality is, is that, you know, the U.S. government completely misread that situation because on the ground, Chiang Kai-shek was not popular with Chinese people. That was the issue is that Chairman Mao had started this revolution and he basically had, was gathering the farmers. He was gathering the local people. And, and, and the United States government was like, Chairman who? Chairman Mao, like, who is this guy? He's a farmer. We don't need to worry about him. Forget this guy. So John Service comes back to the United States and he and he's like, hey, look, you know, I was born and raised in China, speak fluent Chinese at a native level. I've just spent a few days with Chairman Mao. And let me just tell you what he's saying. And essentially, the U.S. government basically, you know, through John Service, this American citizen, they said, no, you know, you, you're corrupted. You know, you, you, you know, you've been brainwashed. You are, you know, they basically, you know, tried, tried him as like a, a, a prisoner. And, and this is the, this is the issue because, you, you know, they didn't want to listen to what was happening. I mean, we know what happened, right? Chiang Kai-shek lost, you know, his government, that entire investment of hundreds of millions of dollars into Chiang Kai-shek was completely lost. And obviously Chairman Mao won, you know, the civil war was won, you know, China became a communist country in 1949. And that's how the birth of the People's Republic of China happened. But again, it's just, a, it's another example of the United States completely missing the ball there because we don't want to listen to, um, you know, we don't want to listen to people that actually have real insights into China. And this is the problem. So this is the, going back to this tweet here is that this is the MacArthurites. So the MacArthurites are modern day people right now that are saying, hey, China's the biggest threat to our democracy. China's not a threat to America's democracy. Not at all. The biggest threat to America's democracy is Americans, is, is, the, is this absolute political divide that we have inside this country. You know, I mean, China, China could give two craps about America's democracy, right? We know that America's a democracy. It doesn't, China, China could care less. And we've seen this in how China does foreign relations around the world. For example, in my upcoming video that I have about Africa, right? One of the big differences is, is that the United States, we kind of pick and choose you know, which governments we want to work with in Africa. If you're a democracy, we're going to tend to work with you. If you're not, we're going to go there and we're going to lecture you on being a democracy. Whereas China, they don't really care. They could care less. You could be a dictator. You could be a, you know, de de democracy. You could be whatever government you want to be. You know, China's there. It's like, well, let's do trade. Like that, that's, we're here for the trade. Like that's, that's, you know, how you govern your country is up to you. That's not our, that's not our space. And so, you know, it just, it really is a frustrating thing in this country where we see, you know, these, these very, very aggressive China hawks. I mean, again, I can't tell you, I mean, there's been a lot of people in here. And again, this is why Kaiser said it very good. You know, the party they should prioritize standing up to is the GOP because a lot of the things coming from the GOP is just ridiculous. I've seen some of these, um, um, some of these potential 
um, laws that I, I had. A, I had a fan message me. They sent me an email and said, "Are you aware of this new law in Texas that is, you know, that basically would ban, you know, Chinese people from buying land?" And it's like, wow, this sounds like straight out of the Chinese Exclusion Act in the 1980s, or sorry, 1880s, um, in that in that time of frame. I mean, I mean, we're really like, what are we doing here? You know, and and that's that's where that's where you have concerns. For example, I mean. It's very difficult because the United States, we've benefited so much from China um, and China as well from the United States. Let's be clear. That's a two way street. hundred percent. Both nations have helped each other. But I mean, we've been attracting some of the brightest and most intelligent Chinese minds for decades. Right. And so many of these people have come. They have become you know, naturalized American citizens. Um, I've I can't tell you how many people I've had. I've had. I've had so many people reach out to me on email, you know, from fans across the world, but I've actually had a, a, a handful of people that have been targeted by the Chinese initiative, by the China initiative. And this is, you know, the, I've had professors, I've had police officers, I've had people reach out to me that were targeted by this initiative and just said, Cyrus, you know, I'm, I'm an American citizen, you know, but I'm, I'm being attacked by my own government because of the color of my skin and because of my ethnicity, you know, and that's, that's not American, you know, that's not, it's not what we believe in this country. You know, at least that's uh, that's the principles that we're supposed to have in this country. But, you know, it's it's a very it's a very difficult thing. And and again, I kind of go back to that opening statement where I said, you know, all of this is because of a balloon. You know, like, how do we know how do we know not, that there's not American balloons or, you know, that we're not doing you know, we're definitely doing counter surveillance on China. You know, if they if this balloon is really there for surveillance, it'd be hard it'd hard to see again i kind of i kind of lean on the edge of like really with all the advanced technology like this is what we're going to do guys we're up on 1400 uh, subscribers i've had a nice little um a little chat there coming up on 40 minutes in the stream but um let's see let me do boom 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 let me go back to our chat here and see make sure i didn't miss anything oh i got a super chat in here this is great so from uh tunai uh tunai tunai Tahitian Fire, 987. Hello from Tahiti, French Polynesia. Awesome. I would love to go there. Will you be doing walk and talk lives when you get back to China? Well, absolutely. Um, so one of the big goals is, you know, to get back to China this year. I'm really excited to go back because I want to film a lot of vlogs. And one of the things that I, I think I think what would be so amazing for me and, and the opportunity that we have for this channel is to be able to you know, basically when I'm on the ground in China, there's going to be a plethora of content to film because every day I can just go out and speak Chinese with people. And I want to do a lot of street interviews. That's what I really want to do. You know, just go, I would love to go to a university and just say, Hey kids, tell me what you think about America. What do you think about China? What do you want the world to know about China? You know, I'll, I'll talk to people on the street. I'll talk to street vendors. Let's go to restaurants, you know, basically kind of bring you guys, you know, from my eyes, how what we're going to look at China and we're just going to document the whole thing. And we're going to make some really engaging videos and really try to show you, you know, what China's really like, you know, and just and just have that as some awesome content for the channel. In addition to, you know, kind of going and trying to tra travel around and do some some fun things as well. So, I, again, um, I think it's um, I, I think there's a great opportunity. And, and certainly um, if I could sort out some. You know what? I do see guys doing the walk and talks where they're actually doing live streams. You know, we can't do that here in America. I got to tell you. I'm, I'm here in the United States and the 5G network here is so inconsistent. It is so difficult to get a signal. I drop calls all the time, very difficult. So I would actually be very happy to go back to China because I know the 5G there is pretty amazing. And I would love to do some live streams where we just say, hey, we're going to go walk down, you know, Nanjing Xilu, one of the most famous roads in China or in Shanghai. And we're going to go walk down that street. It's a fantastic pedestrian street. You know, we'll go to Hong Kong. We'll, we'll, we'll do it up. So that's we're, we're planning hopefully to get there uh, very soon. Um, guys, thank you. Thanks for the great question. I love it. Uh, Paul from Vancouver. Greetings. You are right. Uh, let's see. Um, America under attack from balloons. Yeah. Uh, Mark, I like Mark. Mark, you've been a, such a good uh, supporter of the channel. Mark Young. Let's be honest. This is not a spy balloon or this is the worst spy balloon of all time. <laughs> totally agree. Oh, it's so true. I mean, it's, it's, it really, that's why when, when, you know, I guess it's just I guess it's just hard for Americans to believe that it's not a spy balloon, right? We just we we kind of want to believe that, right? We're just or or we just think, you know what, China's it's, we always assume the worst with China. Um, but you know, it, it's it's just really, really can't. It, 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 there's no way that it's it's spy. I, I I tend to agree with Mark. Mark, you've been a great supporter of the channel. Thank you, buddy, for being here. Um, 
hey, come to Guangzhou. We would want to have a good talk with you. Leo, I'd love to. That's my wife's hometown. I love it in Guangzhou. Uh, Andy of Reports on China says, can we stop calling it a Chinese balloon? It's a lunar balloon. U.S. has stopped calling it a... Uh, I lost that. Yeah, USA stopped calling it Chinese New Year, now uses Lunar New Year. <laughs> That's funny. Um, Cyrus, 700,000 Russian troops fighting Ukraine, and they are winning. Yeah, this one's this dream's not about Russia, Ukraine. Um, you know, I'm just, uh, hey, there we go. Chris, all the best from Australia. Cyrus, you're a legend. Appreciate it, buddy. Thank you guys for the, uh, thank you for the support. I love being here on here. Um, somebody said something about 6G. They are on to 6G by the end of this year. Hung, that's right. I, I mean, by the time, yeah, who knows? I mean, this is great. Uh, Patrick from Nonstar Cyrus, how long did it teach you to take take you to learn Mandarin? It took me about two years to get pretty comfortable with it. Um, so my first, so it's kind of a fun personal story. So for me, I was I was on, um, I went to China to teach golf. That was my first job in China. And then I went on to work for a sports marketing company for a number of years. Um, but for me, um, it, it was it was very awesome because I went to China to to be a golf coach, and for me it was very simple. If you could learn to speak Chinese, you would make more money, right? Because you could teach more lessons and you could make more money. So I was very motivated. So I was able to teach a golf lesson in Chinese within twelve months of arriving, and so I worked really hard on that. And you know, but again, you know, Chinese is something you're never going to start learning, stop learning. So I, I'm still learning to this day. And my wife and her family speaks Cantonese, so I'm trying to uh, improve my Canto as well. Um, all right, let's get back to our stream here. Thanks for the question. Cyrus, why doesn't why US doesn't want Eurasia to be integrated? China wants Eurasia to be closer together. I think what we always have to remember with the United States is that we do have this superiority complex inside this country. And that is that is the, the assumption that you know what, the United States is the best and our way is the best. And you know, we have strategic interest around the world and essentially, you know, the, the interesting thing about how the United States became so powerful was actually because of World War II. And the, the issue is, is that, you know, the United States is really so lucky because of its geography, right? I mean, we, we have, I mean, we only have Canada and Mexico as our neighbors, very, you know, Canada, of course, you know, very neutral, very, you know, very benign neighbor. I mean, probably the best neighbor in the world to have Canada. Uh, they're never going to do anything in Mexico, pretty much the same. I mean, you know, we've, we, and then we're surrounded by two oceans. So, I mean, you, basically no one can really attack the U.S. The only attack that we've really seen was uh, the bombing of Pearl Harbor, uh, which was out in Hawaii. But, I mean, we're talking continental U.S. I mean, it's going to be very hard to attack. And, you know, the, the thing is, is that when Europe was involved in that World War II and it was completely crushed, this is the opportunity that happened because of, uh, if you look up Brenton Woods, you look at Franklin Delano Roosevelt, you look at kind of all of these big deals that were happening. Essentially, all of these European leaders, they all met in Connecticut and they said, look, we're going to use the U.S. dollar. It's going to be the major world reserve currency. You know, we're going to create the SWIFT system. You know, uh, FDR, he signed this massive deal with the king of Saudi Arabia, which would be, you know, arguably probably the most lucrative business deal in the entire world, you know, hey, you're going to sell oil and you're going to sell it exclusively in U.S. dollars. So, you know, we've benefited a lot from that war in the sense that, you know, we were able to set up kind of, we were able to set up the, the system that was going to dominate for the next 70 years. And, you know, we're starting to see that a lot of change there. And I've kind of highlighted this in recent videos where I've said, look, you know, the, the world is shifting away from a dollar hegemony. The world is shifting away from always wanting to make sure that, you know, that, that, you know, the United States is going to dominate everything. And I mean, we really, we're really seeing a difference in that because what we're seeing is, is we we're seeing that countries want more options. They, they do not want to have this dollar hegemony. They do not want to live exclusively underneath the United States. And, you know, I have a great quote that I have in this upcoming video on Sunday. Again, this is about China's efforts in Africa, and it's quite astounding. I'll give you guys a little preview. You look at the trade last year. China did about $260 billion of trade in Africa, which is five times the amount of the United States. And the issue with this is, is that the United States, when they host African countries, their primary objective is always to say, hey, we're concerned about China. We're concerned about China, 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 China. And the funny thing is, is African leaders will look at America and it's like, well, 
this is a meeting between U.S. and Africa. Why, why do we why do we need to talk about China? Like we're trying to talk about what are you going to do for us, right? And so there was the the director of the African Union. His name is Mackie Sal. He said he said a very big quote. I, I forgot. It. I'm going to paraphrase this, but it's in my video on Sunday. But he basically basically said, you know. No one should come in and tell us who do we trade with or who we should do business to. As Africa, we want to do business with everybody in the world. Translation, we want to work with both the U.S. and China. Don't come in here and tell us that you can only choose one or that why, why you think that Africa is bad. Or sorry, or why you think China is bad. You know, China, you know, Africa, we can determine what's what's the best for our country. And so this is a little bit of this superiority complex from the United States where I tell you, this has been a major culture shock for me. because. I cannot tell you how many times I've come back to the United States. I've been back for roughly seven months now in the United States. I can't tell you how many times people have I've heard, you know, like, we live in the best country in the world. This is the best country in the history of civilization. And it's like, really? Like, do we know the history of civilization? Like, I mean, it's a very, again, and that's not me being anti-American. I'm proud of the country. Like, it's, I'm, I'm an American citizen. I mean, I, I, I live here. I, I do enjoy my life here in America. but. It's also, I, I just think when you have this kind of arrogant mentality, it doesn't put you in a position where you can improve yourself, okay? Imagine Michael Jordan every day when, when he's going to the you know basketball practice. I'm the best player in the world, you know? I'm number one. Nobody can be as good as me because I'm Michael Jordan. You know, if he had that mentality, he would have not trained as hard in the gym on the basketball court. The reason why he constantly improved is because he went in hungry every single day saying, I can get better. I can get better. And this is my issue with the United States right now is because we keep telling everybody, hey, we're number one. We're the best in the world. We do everything's amazing because we're American. You know what? There's a lot of things we can improve in this country. There's a lot of things in this country that are absolutely awful. I mean, you look at, I mean, just the, um, I was talking to a doctor this, uh, this afternoon and, and she uh, delivers babies and she said, you have no idea the foster care system in this country is an absolute nightmare. You know, talking about women's rights, you know, rights to contraceptives things. I mean, even in different states, she lived in Alabama for three years doing her doctorate uh, degree. She said, it's absolutely horrific. The, the, the access to, you know, basic things like uh, birth control. You know, it was just terrible for for uh, for women's for women's rights there. So again, like when we're in this position where we get too arrogant, you're not improving. You're not asking yourselves, "How do I improve every single day?" That's that's one of the big things that's that that is a big difference there. And and so again, kind of going back to the United States now, and and you know, th this is why. You know, I had I had a close friend of mine. You know, he brought up a really good point. He said, "Cyrus, mention this on your live stream tonight." He said. Think about the United States. We have over 800 military bases around the world. How many military bases are surrounding China right now? Right? I think we have over 150 bases in Japan, maybe another 100 in Korea. So, I mean, we're looking well over 200 bases just, just you know, within Japan and Korea. So we've got we've got China surrounded. I mean, how many times do United States military vehicles are going through the South China Sea, are going through... Um, you know, the Taiwan Strait, you know, so again, you're kind of seeing a little bit where, you know, it's, it's just, it's, it's a really interesting, it's interesting thing to, to kind of analyze here. You know, I mean, the United States is get is basically losing their crap over a balloon that has gone into American airspace. Meanwhile, I mean, we've got 800 military bases around the world. I mean, we're covered. We've got the entire globe covered you know, in, in order to make sure that we maintain our position as number one and that people act in the best interest of America. I mean, that's the big, that's the biggest thing. I mean, we, we want to make sure that uh, it's always a strategic interest. You'll hear that often in, in U.S. foreign policy. We have a strategic interest in that area. Of course you do. Right? I mean, it's but it's it's also funny, you know, when we, you know, you know, for example, like why does why, why would we have U.S. military vehicles in um you know, in the Taiwan Strait, you know, I mean, the United States is not in Asia, you know, but it's like, well, we have a strategic interest there. We want to make sure that everything's safe and, you know, it's in our best interest. So no one kind of polices the United States, right? We can kind of, we can sail a ship basically anywhere in the world. No one can question us, right? We're the U.S. So there's, so again, I mean, I think when we come down to, when we come down to this thing, I mean, this is where for, for me, a, a big loss is, is I think, 
I'm, I'm really sad that Anthony Blinken has postponed this trip. I think it would be much better. Um, you know, it would be much better if they go to, if, if he were actually to go there because engaging in dialogue is, is really what we need, but I'm going to bring up another tweet here. I saw this today. I thought this was worth mentioning. And now this goes back to, I think many of you have heard this story as well, that there was a, a, a U.S. Air Force general who said, it's in my gut feeling, it's my gut feeling that the United States and China are going to go to war by 2025. So in a leaked memo, an American general reportedly said his gut told him the U.S. and China would be at war in 2025. <clears throat> We're now making policy on matters of life and death matter based on gut feelings. And I think what we really need to, there's a big responsibility from politicians, from U.S. government officials, from military generals like this person, because when you come out and you say that, right, you come out and you say, my gut feeling says that we're going to go, I mean, first of all, you're the gen, you're like the, you know, a, a leading general in the United States Air Force. And then you come out in public and say, I have a gut feeling we're going to do that. Your, your gut is based on what? I mean, you you know, this is this is just it's so irresponsible to come out in the public and say that because now all of a sudden, you know, this has been a national headline all over the United States, you know, and that what it does is it creates more and more fear for America. But what it's also doing is, is it's kind of prepping the United States citizens for a potential war, because all of a sudden, you know, for example, if we look back to 2003, you know, the the Iraq war. There was a very, there's a fantastic movie if you haven't watched it. It's called Vice. Um, it's uh, Christian Bale is the actor in there. Phenomenal actor. He plays Dick Cheney. And it just shows you the unbelievable amount of corruption that was happening in the United States government. And, and basically, they had a very difficult job because it's like, well, we want to go to war with Iraq, but we need to kind of prep the United States citizens. We basically got to sell them this idea. And... It was so sad to see because, you know, they knew there that Iraq did not have weapons of mass destruction. They knew that there was no real reason to go in there. But it's like, well, if we tell this lie and, you know, based on a poll of American citizens, hey, Colin Powell, you have been voted on as the most trustworthy person here in our government. So what we'd like you to do is we'd like you to go up on stage under oath and we'd like you to lie. And we'd like you to say that that is, you know, that there's weapons of mass destruction there. Now, of course, we know this all when now. And the, and the issue was, is even Colin Powell, I believe, on his deathbed when before he passed away, as he said, that was the biggest regret of his life that he did that. But but again, I mean, you look at what that consented to, because now all of a sudden you start feeding this stuff to the media. Right. I think that's maybe a video that I'm going to do. Maybe I should go out in the streets here in America and, you know, Maybe a title for a video would be like asking Americans what they think about China and kind of just give you guys a little insight. Let me know in the comments if you think that would make it be a cool video to do. Uh, I mean, because I'd like to what I'd like to do as well is like I'd love to find somebody that's super anti China and then just kind of sit down and reason with them. I'd love to sit down and talk to them because honestly, like I'm, I'm actually very encouraged because I've been back in the United States for seven months and. I can't tell you, I've, every single person that I've met, I mean, I'm not kidding you, every single person, I tell them, hey, man, I run a, a geopolitics show on, on YouTube. Hey, I talk about China. And most people are actually fascinated with that. They're actually like, wow, you lived in China for a long year. Like, you're like what's that about? Like seven, eight out of 10 of people will say that. And, you know, the other ones that might have a negative perception of China, I always try to give them some nuance, you know? Um, and, and, and usually they have such a backwards opinion of China I mean, again, like I've, I've had, I've, I can't tell you how many people are like, well, does that mean that you've given up your U.S. citizenship? Like, does that mean that you're a Chinese national now? I'm like, no, no, I just went to work there. Like, <laughs> you know, but they're like, oh, I, th I would have thought that as soon as you cross the border, you had to surrender your U.S. passport. I'm like, wow, of course not. Like, it's called being an expat, you know, but, but again, like, yeah, you know, you can't blame them. They've never left the country. They don't know. They don't, you know, they're assuming, oh, China's a communist country. So, you know, I, I kind of tell them, Hey, you know what? There's, there's hundreds of thousands of foreigners that live in, in China. You know, there's, you know, there's hundreds of thousands of Americans probably spread throughout the country, you know, like living in China, it, there's a lot of people to do that, you know, it's, it, and you know, what was it like, you know, and, and I kind of tell them my stories and, you know, people always walk away with a little bit better uh, perception of, of China. So again, you know, I mean, we got to be careful of the of the the anti-China propagandists because you know we've seen a lot of that on YouTube. I mean, do you, do you guys remember a few months ago uh, when 
all, when all the rage was happening, China's economy will collapse in 28 days. And it was like, wow, you've given us a, you know, okay, great. Let me set the clock here. 28 days from now. All right. It's going to officially collapse. And, you know, but, but the thing was, is it started to be, because a lot of what YouTubers do is we look at other trending videos. And so all of a sudden, you know, this, you know, one, one person, I think it was, I think it was a news outlet said that, you know, it's like China's economy is going to collapse. Then all of a sudden you started seeing a lot of these other YouTubers, someone like a Graham Steve, uh, Graham Stephan, who is a fantastic finance channel, has about 4 million subscribers, does great finance videos, you know, like, you know, how to save for 401k, how to have a mortgage, how I became a millionaire, how I do real estate. Then all of a sudden it's like China's economy is going to collapse in 27 days. And you're like, whoa, like, hold on, time out. You don't talk about China, like you're you know you you're all about finance, and now all of a sudden you come out with this video, but you know that video on his channel does very well, gets millions of views because it's kind of a trending topic. Then everyone starts doubling down on that. Oh, China's economy is going to collapse, collapse, collapse. I mean, you know, many of you know I'm I'm a huge critic of um, Gordon Chang. I'd love to get Gordon Chang on here. Would love to debate Gordon Chang. Um, you know, but I mean, everything he says is just hundred percent. I mean, he's, he's half of what he says is just conspiracy theories and just complete nonsense. He must be having a field day with these. I haven't, I haven't, uh, <clears throat> also I haven't, I haven't checked his tweets, but he, he said, um, let me see. Uh, let me go back to the Stevens here. Uh, Kay Stevenson, Cyrus, you fa you failed to mention that general Minihan also said to aim for the head and that's of Chinese. That's a great point. And again, like, that's the point that I mentioned. I think I mentioned that in a tweet where I said, can you imagine if a Chinese PLA general came out and said that? I mean, that would be causing outrage all over the United States. But, but again, this is where, you know, we do see a lot of patience and a lot of temperance from China because it's, again, it's like we have a, we have a U.S. Arm, we have a U.S. Air Force general that said we need to come out and aim for the head, you know, basically take these Chinese people out. and. I mean, that's ridiculous. That's just ridiculous, right? Um, I mean, it's it's crazy. Um, please take on Mike Mike Pompeo for a debate. I would love to do Mike Pompeo. He is so, um, he's just ridiculous. He's just so ridiculous. Um, hello, subscriber from the Philippines. Philippines, represent. Well, welcome to be here. How many Chinese live in the U.S.? A lot, a tremendous amount, millions. I mean, millions and millions of Chinese live here. Because we, we all, well, you have to remember as well. I mean, we've had Chinese in America since the 1800s, right? So I mean, I mean, we've had uh, there's you know the Chinese built the railway here in America, right? I mean, we've had you know Chinese. I mean, I, I mean, look at like you go to L.A., San Francisco, New York City. I was in New York City uh, beginning of December. If you haven't watched my video where I was walking around uh, Times Square making a video there, I went down to Chinatown, had a great meal uh, in Chinatown with a group of Chinese American businessmen. Fantastic. Here you go. Um, somebody said my daughter-in-law. Man, there we go. D wonders. My son has a good life in China. Uh, D wonders. My daughter-in-law is Chinese. Fantastic. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, Kevin he from Australia. Good to see the U.S. learn the feeling other countries felt what the U.S. did to them before. Yeah, D, that's awesome. I mean, that's what it is. Um, yeah, Gordon Chang, Peter Lai. Gordon Chang is halfway to the other world. He's just really in his own little world. He's in La La Land. It's, uh, it's just crazy. Um, yeah, let's see. Uh, don't a lot of types of, uh, don't a lot of types of people live in America? Absolutely. We have a, that's, that's what, that's what makes our country so great, right? You know, we, we absolutely have a tremendous amount of diversity in this country. <coughs> you know, we welcome people from all nations across the world. That's, that's why it's very triggering to me when you have somebody like Kyle Bass who goes on, you know, MSNBC and says, you know, we need to look at all Chinese people as potential spies because that's not, that is so anti-American. It's, it's ridiculous. It's, it's McCarthyism. And it goes back to that tweet that I shared earlier where it goes, you know, pathetic, wish they'd throw some spine. The party they should prioritize standing up to is the GOP, not the CCP. And, and that is, that is this, um, you know, this McCarthyism, this just crazy anti-China rhetoric. Uh, now, guys, we uh, we've passed 1600 people in the stream, which is amazing. Um, I think I pretty much said everything that I've wanted to do about the about the, um, you know, balloon, the balloon gate and everything about it. This has been a fun stream for me, as you can see, very casual, always have a lot to say, though. And I appreciate it. 1600 people. You guys are amazing because the most important, you know, 
commodity in the world is time. And you guys gave your time to me here on YouTube. So I appreciate you being here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up to question and answers. So we're going to do we're going to do exactly 20 minutes of Q&A. So whatever you have, um, just say it out. We can be about anything. And um, I just want to say uh, thank you for being here. Oh, here we go. Um, let me see. Uh, Megathai, Megathai, um, hey, I love your videos. Would you please do a video on workplace democracy in China? Workplace democracy, that is an interesting one. Um, workplace democracy, I mean, I, I don't know exactly what you mean by that. I would say that, um, you know, for example, I, I think in China, one of the good things that in their society is that they have a system of, of meritocracy. And so I think it's very much like a, a like any company as well is as far as you know you need to prove yourself and work your way up the ladder in order to, to in order for that to happen um, you know in order for you to grow inside a company you know that's kind of that's very much the Chinese culture that obviously happens within the Chinese government it happens on the local level it happens within companies that's what we do here in the West right if you wanted to be the CEO of Apple you know you're going to have to go in and work your way up right you're not you're not going to um, they're not going to have a free and open election. Hey, who wants to be the CEO of Apple, right? It's no, you're going to have to to do that. So um, that's kind of my thoughts on on that. I'm not sure exactly what the uh, workplace democracy, but I do appreciate um, I do appreciate your uh, support to the channel. Thank you so much for that. Uh, this is from Chiu uh, Chiu uh, Cyrus, do you personally think it's a spy balloon? I personally do not think it's a spy balloon. Um, and and I'll just be honest because what I kind of opened up. The beginning of tonight's show is, as I said, is very important to understand that the United States and China both spy on each other. It's it's an absolute hundred percent fact, and I just see it very like honestly. If you're going to spy on the United States, why would you do it with a balloon? It doesn't make sense to me. Um, I could be wrong, but in my I personally don't believe it's a um, a spy balloon. I, I think it'd be much easier for you to send like someone on the ground or to have you know drones or to have some kind of you know, advanced technology. I, I just don't see that really happening. Um, what about the clown Peter Zaishan? Uh, that guy's a little bit much, just too much here. Again, he's another guy that just resorts to just just too much here. Um, Jimmy Dore, a lot now. I don't, I don't. I did share this on a tweet, so um, I do encourage you guys to follow me on Twitter as well. It's probably my most active platform where I'm at least posting something every single day. Um, but Jimmy Dore absolutely you know, let uh, dropped a bombshell on Tucker Carlson last night. And I, maybe it was two nights ago. But he basically said, you know, China's not our enemy. You know, the military industrial complex is running this country. And it's it's so true. I mean, it, it's it's 100% true. And that's that's a thing where, you know, I, I mean, it's been interesting, because when we look at, you know, we, you know, we often give China, you know, criticism for being a one party state. Well, we only have one additional party here in the United States. We have a two-party state, but essentially they basically kind of work for the same boss, you know, which is the military industrial complex, which runs this country. So, you know, there's not a lot of difference between the Republicans and Democrats, to be honest, because in this country, the military runs it. That's just exactly how it goes. So, you know, um, that's just, that is just what it is, unfortunately. That's, and there's nothing you can do about that. I, I mean... I wish we'd have more people speaking out. I wish we'd have more people knowledge, but that is just what it is. Let me um let me make sure I did not miss any. Um, hold on, there's another super chat that came in. I don't want to miss that. Where did that other one go? Okay, uh, Mobis Mobis Zero. Can you make a video on the relationship between China and Japan? That's a good idea. I should make a um I should make a video about that. Um. Yeah, so a video about China and Japan, very interesting one because, um, yeah, let me do some more. Um, <clears throat> let me do some more research on that. Um, B. Kaladar, John Service was born in Chengdu, Hao Chongqing. Yeah, I, I knew it was one of those two. I I, I might have got that mistake, and I was going off my memory. I, I think I think it is Chengdu. I think you're right. Um, and then you should do a video with Professor Richard Wolf. Richard Wolf would be a great one. I love Richard Wolf. His democracy now is really good. Richard Wolf's fantastic YouTube channel. So many guys I really, really um, admire. And, you know, another thing that, um, oh, here we go. Um, your thoughts on the digital UN. Um, well, I have invited, so I've done a lot of videos on the digital UN. And I think it's really interesting because I'm, I'm a big believer in the future of digital currency. 
a lot of people write it off. A lot of people are like, oh, you're crazy. You know, you think it's you think it's much bigger than it actually is. It's going to be a very powerful, powerful tool in the future. And again, you know, we have China really leading the front on this. But I mean, if you if you kind of if you're on the fence of the digital currency, I believe it's 80 percent of the world's federal reserves around the world are researching, are researching and investing, are researching and or investing into a digital currency. I mean, think about our world. Everything's digital, right? Everything's based on your phone now, right? So, I mean, it, you'd be silly to, to think that, you know, our currencies aren't going to change. Uh, I mean, it's like stock trading, right? Like before you actually had to get a telephone and call you up your stockbroker to buy a stock. Um, well, now you can just do it on your phone right? I mean, nobody calls up a broker anymore. Everything, in addition to that, everything's free. You don't even have to pay for trades anymore. So, I mean, you know, everything is shifting more digital. I'm probably going to invite Richard Turin, who is the world's leading expert on China's digital currency, more than likely going to get him back on the show probably within the next month or so. So, um, yes, so that's a good one. Um, I hate how every, how Japan gets a free pass for everything, but China is a threat and Korea is irrelevant. You know, the big thing with that, um, Mobis, is because Japan, you know, they essentially follow the United States orders, you know, and so they're kind of licked. And when we look at this, like the Western alliance, we always tend to put Japan right in there, right? We kind of put them in. It's like it's the Western alliance, but throw in Japan because they kind of follow suit as well. So I think that's a really... Um, uh, you know, that that's an interesting, that, that's the big difference. I mean, the, the big thing about it is as well is we know this, the United States does not like a country that is not a democracy. That is a fact. So because China is a, you know, it's, well, it's basically a socialist country, you know, it's, it's socialism with Chinese characteristics, but the official name is it's a communist party. But because of that lone fact, um, that is the main reason why, you know, we, I mean, this is, you know, the United States will always be critical towards China for that one fact. I mean, we're never going to respect uh, the government. For me, you know, I mean, again, like I'm I'm very I try to be very unbiased and just try to be right in the middle where it's not like I'm saying that China's system is better, nor am I saying America's system better. I think it's important that every country find a system that works for them. So for me, again, like when I'm when I lived in China for 10 years, I was a guest in their country. Right. Um, it's very difficult for a foreigner to to get permanent residence. It is it is possible. Um, I think it's almost unheard of for a foreigner to become a Chinese national. Um, you can become a, a Hong Kong passport holder. Uh, one of the one of the uh, ladies that I follow, her name is Ashley. She's a digital marketer in China. Um, she uh, she actually just got her Hong Kong citizenship, which was quite amazing. So. Um, this is really, so yeah, anyways, when, my point with that saying is, is that when you're in China, you're a guest in their country and you respect that, that government, you know, that, that's, that's all I do. I mean, again, if I'm living in China, that's the government of the country, my, what can you do? You know? And so I'm going to observe it and make, and, uh, think about that. So, uh, Kaladar, uh, Mike Pompeo has health problems. Could he run for president? I don't think he has health problems too. I know he's actually lost a ton of weight. So, um, you know, credit to him for getting in better shape. I don't think he's going to make a run, though, for 2024. I don't see that. Uh, Will Lee, do you still play golf? I do play golf. I'm still a very much an avid golfer. I used to coach professionally for many years. Um, actually, on a side note, I actually have um, a couple of the students that I used to work with in Shanghai. They now are here in the United States. Uh, two of them have uh, full ride scholarships to Stanford University, and another one has a, a full ride scholarship to Yale. So it's quite amazing for me, you know, when I look back 15 years ago, going to China, you know, I met these kids when they're six, seven years old, you know, here they are, you know, 15 years later, um, you know, uh, or uh, 15 or when did I meet them? I, anyways, there they are, they're in university now and they're playing golf. So it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I've had a lot of requests to get Julian Co on my channel. I've, I have reached out to his team. Um, I haven't got a response. So, you know, I've had you know, probably a dozen people message me to try to get Julian on. Uh, Julian has a great insight into the situation in Taiwan. That is, of course, going to be a very big topic that we'll discuss. And that, um, yeah, I really want to get Julian. That would be, he'd be a fantastic uh, guest on here. Uh, BC, are you still teaching golf? I don't teach golf. Um, if you do love golf, though, I do have a golf channel. So just look up Cyrus PGA here. Um, I do have a golf channel here on YouTube. It's still small. My China channel is much bigger. It's my main focus of the China, China channel. Um, Tim McGraw. Hello, Cyrus. Hi. Hello, Tim. 
Uh, should the U.S. All right, this is from Mark. Should the U.S. shoot down the balloon when it's over the U.S. water just to know what it is? Don't shoot it over the land. Um, I don't know. I think what's um, you know what's interesting. I you know what's really interesting, Mark, on that is I think that they, I think they could potentially do that. I mean, if they're going to shoot it down, it would definitely be over water. And you know what? I think it would be amazing if they shoot it down and it's just like, oh, wow, it really was a weather balloon. China's not spying on us. <laughs> That'd be awesome. You know, maybe they don't want to shoot it down because maybe they I mean, they don't want to take that risk of losing face. You know, who knows? That'd be really interesting. Um, let's see here. Um, let's see. Victor Gao on the channel. Can you get Dr. Victor Gao? I'm going to write that down. I don't know Victor Gao. There you go. Ba -ba -ba. I'll, I'll reach out to him. Let's see. Yeah, I don't think um, I don't think that they have. Um, let's see. I don't know. I'm not sure of a Victor Gao. To be honest. So a lot of you guys are asking about golf. I'm just going to drop this link in here. If you do like golf. Here's my second YouTube channel. You can go follow over there. I do post some golf videos on there when I have time. But my um, my fo my focus, my main th that's kind of like my hobby channel. Um, I do enjoy it, and if you like it, go for it. If you like golf, go follow over there. But I do keep my channel separate, obviously, because this one is focused on China. So I got jo I'm, I'm writing these down. Please interview Joanna Joanna Lay. Um, Let's see. Is is the Guaylo sixty account suspended by YouTube? I don't know. I don't believe so. I think Guaylo's just uh, back in Canada, just doing his thing. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Deborah, good question here. You seem to be very critical of the GOP, but I've heard quite a few Chinese people saying that the U.S. Democrat government policies treats China even worse. I think one of the things that um, you know what's interesting about this, Deborah, is that. I think you hear the most extreme things from the GOP. That's kind of where I'm I'm really I'm not trying to say that the Democrats are better because again, I mentioned this point a lot is that the only thing that really unites Democrats and Republicans is being anti-China. That's that's ironically the only thing that really unites the two parties. And it's sad. You know, there'd be there should be a lot of other things that unite our, you know, politicians inside our country. Uh, I think a lot of people are actually surprised though that Joe Biden's policies towards China. Uh, many people actually be believe that they're worse than Trump's. And there was a thought, though, that, you know, again, that, you know, Trump had put in these trade policies, these sorry, these trade tariffs, and that Joe Biden would come in and he would fix this. But again, you know, that didn't happen. So that was really, um, you know, really sad to see. So, I mean, uh, it's it's ridiculous. Yeah. So here we go. Definitely can shoot balloon down. Sparsely populated Dakota, Montana. They just don't want to reveal that it's just a meteor, meteorology balloon and, and, and ruin the sinophobia hysteria. Yeah, unfortunately, got milk. I think you're right on that. Um, <clears throat> yep. Money unites the two parties every day, all time. Yep, because it's the military industrial complex. Will Lee, I read a lot of David Ledbetter golf books. So I, oh, I helped open the Shanghai David Ledbetter Golf Academy in 2007. Yeah, check out my latest video. Go to the YouTube channel. I just made a video about breaking breaking seventy on the golf course. So go watch that. Uh, go watch that video. Will I think you'll like it? Um, golf is nice, except it's tedious to carry around the clubs. Don't worry, you got golf carts. Oh, Carl Da. You know what? I have reached out to Carl on Twitter, and he he tweeted at me. Uh, we both follow each other on Twitter, and he's and I just and I said, hey buddy, let's do a video together in 2023. And he said, all right, man, I'm in. Let's do it. So that'll happen. Um, oh, you know what? Okay. I love that you guys are giving me suggestions. Jeffrey Sachs, I've reached out. So you know what? It's very difficult to get a hold of these people. That's the issue. Now, I've reached out to Jeffrey Sachs, and I actually got a response, which was nice. So at least I got a response. And he said, um, you know, he's, and he just said, uh, you know, really appreciate your work. Really appreciate you reaching out. Um, unfortunately I'm just, I don't have the time to join, which I was a little disappointed. Um, cause I'm like, the guy's on so many media interviews. I'm like, come on, man, we could do a great YouTube video together. I'd love to get you on the channel, but, um, you know what it is? Um, you know what, we're going to keep trying. I'm going to stay consistent. I'm going to consistently stay in his inbox and, and be like, you know what, this Cyrus guy, he's consistent and we're going to reward him 
with a Jeffrey Sachs video. So that's the power of positive thinking. Um, let's see. Uh, Jason Smith from Beijing. Um, Jason Smith, I believe he runs that uh, podcast called The Bridge. Is that is that Kaladar? Is that correct? Can you confirm that? Um, here we go. Man, I love all the questions coming in. Hey, when, let's see. There we go. Alejandro Cyrus, my man, love your videos and style. Greetings from Ecuador. Thank you, my friend. Thank you for being here. <clears throat> yeah, GOP is like YouTube thumbnail, says the most outrageous things for the clickbait. Hey, I got to say, though, as a YouTuber, I do, you know, you got to have a good thumbnail. It is, it is true. You guys like my water bottle? Tayo. Gonna toss some yo, baby. All right, let's do this. Uh, Cyrus interviewed John Ross. Hey, I got a whole, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna give this to my assistant. And we're gonna get her to email all these people and we're gonna keep trying to go. Thoughts on tech sanctions on the on China. So here's my thoughts on the tech sanctions. Um, I I think that it doesn't make sense. You know, I mean, it just doesn't make sense to me. I mean, we we have so I'm 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 kind of making a I'm doing a lot of research on you know what we're seeing. I've got a, I've got another video. So I've got three. This, this is going to be three videos in a row for me. So you got a live stream tonight. Tomorrow I have a video talking about the United States failed China policy and how it's actually making America weaker. And this is what I'm going to bring up is the fact that, for example, you know we look at um, we look at how the United States has sanctioned Huawei. Okay, I've I've um, I mean the the funny thing is is when you go to the Middle East. Right, and you go to other parts of the world, Huawei tech dominates, and you know, and the thing is, is that they get an amazing piece of equipment at a great at a fraction of the price, and I mean, it's just it's just so much fear mongering, you know. It's the same thing. I did I did a video about the TikTok ban in China. Now TikTok right now, what they're doing is they so so TikTok is in Washington D.C. right now, paying literally you know, tens of millions of dollars, if not more to lobbyists inside Washington, DC to basically try to lobby and, and kind of buy them some time, you know, you know, within these, um, you know, within Washington, DC. So basically that's what t TikTok is spending their time and money on right now is they're trying to lobby us politicians so that they can avoid getting banned here. Because the thing is, is that, you know, I broke it down in my video about TikTok. Is that unfortunately, you know what's what's incredible is that, <clears throat> excuse me, is that you know we we just think okay, you know China's using TikTok to spy on us. You know they're trying to spy on us. They're trying to do this, but the reality is is that um, it, it's not a it, it, you know why would China's government be using an app to spy? Like what data? Are, what what data are they going to get? Like look at what people do on TikTok. They sing and dance on there. You know. Do you, you know, how arrogant do you, are you that you think China's government's going to spy on you doing a lip singing to a Britney Spears song? I mean, it just doesn't make any sense to me. But again, it's the same, the same thing, you know, and, and it's, uh, it's, it's ridiculous, right? Like India banned it, banned it for, you know, for no reason. It's, it's really isn't. So, um, <clears throat> let's see, uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, Asian Boss seems very pro West or the Fo Fung Brothers Asian Boss channel collab with Li Jingjing. Li Jingjing would be good. Yeah, I know Li Jingjing as well. Oh, uh, rabbits for Yang. Tried the Meld Mask Consensus app yet? Big update coming, buddy. I have not tried that app yet. It just um, it just seems too confusing. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's a little too confusing for me. I'm not. Uh, I don't. I don't know where to go with that one. <laughs> just to be honest. Um, you know what? So let's, let's come up with, let's do a, any two last questions. Let's do two more questions and we're going to end the stream because we've had a good stream and I want to end on a high note here. We're coming up on 123. Really appreciate all of your guys, um, comments. I, th I think today was a very good interactive stream. A lot of, um, a lot of great things. Yeah. Harry, how is China able to steal so much technology that the U S hasn't invented yet? Uh, Matt Errett and Cynthia Chung. I'll write those names down. Yeah, you know, the interesting thing with, um, I, I, I did a video about the space station, China space station, and, you know, there was a lot of technology in there that, that China has invented, 
and that the United States does not have. And I think that's the problem, right? This is the problem, guys. I read I, I read a lot of articles every day. And one of the other articles I read, it talked about AI. And it said that this was quite telling. This would actually make a good video. Is it said, you know, the United States is a great leader in AI. China is a great leader in AI. But the best combination is when the United States engineers and Chinese engineers are working together on producing this particular part of AI. So the article was really basically talking just about the benefits of, of when the United States and China work together. And again, that's kind of the whole thing of this channel. And many of my long-term viewers on here, you know that that's a line that I say all the time when the US and China work together, the whole world wins. And it's just, it's just, it's why, well, of course it's going to win, right? You have two amazing countries, you know, both China and America are amazing countries with amazing people. And that is the truth. And I think I really want, you know, find a way that we need to, to get to, to get together here. All right. <clears throat> One last question here. And then we're going to send it out with a, a little, uh, little drone footage for you guys here. Will China dominate the EV industry and the green industry? They already are. They already are. I mean, they've already, they are soon going to be the number one car exporter in the world. Uh, they've just become the number two position just behind Japan, but they surpassed Germany. Um, they are dominating in EV. I mean, they're really doing an amazing, amazing job. I mean, even if you look at Tesla, okay, yes, it's a American company, but I mean, they produce a tremendous amount of cars in China. Um, and China is already the, the, uh, leader, the world leader in renewable energy. So guys, a couple last things. Uh, I want to thank you all. Um, and so I've got two more videos for you. So tomorrow, tomorrow night's video, it's going to debut at 5 p.m. Pacific time where I'm at. Um, and that is going to be on the United States failed China policy. There's a very amazing article written by our former Secretary of Treasury. Um, it's a really good video. So please watch that tomorrow. And then I have on Sunday another video about the U.S. and Africa. So I really want you guys to watch uh, those videos. They're, they're really good. We've worked hard on making those good videos for you guys. Guys, thank you all for being here. I'm going to really appreciate it. I'll still be around in the chats, but let's just go ahead and send it off with a little bit of a show ending here. Thank you all, and, and we'll see you in this weekend's two videos.